Hey folks, last week on our video we were out test driving the new Z-Man 3 inch baby goat and got stuck into a couple of fish. I was super impressed with how well that plastic rigs and fishes weedless. So this week's video, we're getting stuck into some flatties. We're getting out there and we're giving it a serious crack weedless rigged. So we've got that three inch baby goat in hot snakes color because that water is still a dirty coffee brown color. So we've got that UV reactive and that dark silhouette color in that plastic. We're rigging it on a 1 6th number one, TT Lewis Snake Locks jig head. And stay tuned, at the end of this video, I'll step you through how to rig that plastic on that jig head as well. Uh, and then we're gonna scent up, so scent it up with that saltwater yabby nipper in that Procure because we're imitating a crustacean presentation. So that weedless rig around allows us to effectively fish those mangrove roots, spikes around the mangroves and any lay down timber and all of that weed that was in on the flats and edges that I was fishing as well. So this week, let's get out there. Let's get stuck into a flatty on a weedless rigged Z-Man 3 inch baby goat. Fish on. That water's still chocolatey brown, but because we've got some big tides pushing in here, I think it's pushing plenty of saltier water in and also press, pushing the bait in and that sort of thing. So. There's plenty of bait around and the fish are feeding and post rain, a lot of the time there's a lot of nutrients get injected into the system. So that I think a lot of this bait comes in feeding on that stuff. So that in turn attracts the predators in as the water gets a bit saltier. Get those big tides pushing in. And I'm fishing basically the last couple of hours of the run in just pushing up along this mangrove edge. And I'm fishing that weedless rigged three inch baby goat. In this dirtier water, it's got plenty of action. And I can fish it a bit slower with, I can fish it a bit slower with the, um, with the weedless rig. I don't have to worry about the, the weed or the sticks or any of that sort of stuff. So. I can just put that in, cast without fear, punch it right up into those mangroves and then hop it back out again. in that mangrove edge there. That was a solid tap too. Oh, nice lady. Oh, 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 put on the lap. That was cool. That's a, a great start. On our weedless rigs, baby goat. That's a nice fish. Buddy. Get the net on him. Yeah, and we're in the net. You beauty. What's that weedless rigged baby goat? Beautiful little plucky, those two little paddle tail legs kicking. Guys have been buzzing it on the surface like a frog. For bass and barra and jacks and that sort of thing also goes all right weedless fished on the bottom that's a good sort of a mid 40s i guess flatty he's, he's throwing the lure now that i've got him on the grips and that's that presentation i'll just unhook it here have a look at that that's that presentation so you can see that 10 times tough elastic soft plastic is super soft and flexy so it clears the hook so easily you know that that plastic has no problem clearing that hook so we're just on a one sixth ounce number one easy rigging i just got to pop that back through there and we're good to go again you know it's not a one one oh, oh, oh. it's not a one plastic one fish type job so that's a, or one bite. So that's a one sixth 
TT Lewis Snake Locks Finesse number number one hook. You could go bigger than that if you wanted to, but number one, I might get a grunter or a brim on that as well. And that little fella legs kicking along beautifully. And that's the result. Nice little flatty to kick things off. Beautiful. There we go, what are you? Oh, I missed him. Oh, pikey, is it? Or little Trev, maybe. Oh, it's a flat fish. That is crazy. That fish hit it. I missed it. I tried pretty hard to hook it. Wound quickly away from it. And he's just raced out and drilled it. That's awesome. That is crazy. Come here, buddy. Get in there. There you go. On that weedless baby goat again. That is awesome. So. I flicked in there that time. I gave it a few flicks and I and I had a bit of a hit. And normally I'd just keep rolling it, but I gave it a bit of a rip and then it hit again. Then I wound fast. Boom, he just mowed it down. <laughs> that is cool. Fishing just amazes me every time. That was a brilliant take. I call it for every wrong fish under the sun. I thought it was a pikey. Then I thought, oh, I've got a bit more weight. Might be a trev. Nah, flatfish. Brilliant. Well, that is cool. Our plan has definitely come together there. The plan was to get out and catch a couple of floodies on the goat rigged weedless. It rigs absolutely beautifully on that snake locks finesse. Rigs absolutely beautifully on that snake locks finesse jig head. I'm caught in the net here, so I'll just sort that out. That's pinned him nicely. Now I'll try not to pin myself here. This is another reason why I love plastics in the kayak. Like lures with trebles in the kayak are just a nightmare, I reckon. Like when you've got when you've got fish shaking around, you've got lures flying around the place. Last thing you want to be dealing with is trebles. So for me, pluckies are the absolute winner for kayak fishing. I've got one hook to worry about. I can hang on to the hook. I can control the hook. And it, yeah, it definitely. Come on, buddy, I've got you on the grips. Yeah, that single hook definitely makes life safer in the kayak. Less damage to the fish, less damage to you, and less hook points to worry about flying around the place. And saying that, I've tied me hook in a bit of a knot here. So there you go. So, as I was saying, that single hook, less for me to worry about, less for me to deal with getting out of the fish, less damage to the fish, all that sort of thing. Much, much safer fishing plackies. So there you go, again, that super soft and flexible plastic, you can see it's blasted right up the jig head there. So, it's already caught a few fish, well, I've caught a couple of floodies on it, a few other bits and pieces, but that plastic's holding together beautifully still. It's super soft and flexible, so it clears that jig head on the strike. Even then, I made to rattle it, rattle it, and then he's eating it, so he's eating it properly. Not a giant fish again, but they're those beautiful pan-sized flatties, mid-40s, fight hard. Good times. All right. Get out there and give that little baby go to go. It's um, definitely a cool plucky. All right, so what we're doing here with our weedless baby goat is we're just punching it right in there on the edge of the mangroves. Allow it to sink to the bottom and you'll see the line will go slack when it's on the bottom. Give it a few shakes, wind up, watch that line again. There's a little bit of a belly in the line from the wind, but you can still see when you stop, you can still see that line go slack and we're on the bottom. Along the edge of the mangroves here, it's probably only, oh, maybe a metre of water. Plenty of water to hold a floody. And on the high tide, they'll be lurking up along the edge of that mangrove, 
hunting for bait fish. I like weedless rigging for picking the edges of the mangroves. Just because I reckon the flatties, well, from what I've found, I think they they kind of feed along the edge of those spiky mangrove roots that are an absolute pain in the butt for snagging your lure on. But if you're fishing weedless, you can punch it right in under the mangroves there. It doesn't matter if it falls in amongst those spikes a bit, it'll just bounce its way through. But I think the flathead, they don't want to be swimming up on top of those spikes so much, but I think they do patrol along the edge of it and ambush any bait fish and stuff that comes out off the edge there or is, is also working along the edge of those spikes. Wind's messing with our drift a little bit, spinning us a bit, so I'm just trying to get out, a cast distance out, I'm sitting. I'm just trying to keep my yak drifting sideways to the mangroves. Then you can kind of just pick likely looking spots. You know, if it's all just flat mangrove edge, a lot of the time it doesn't produce as well, but things like here where there's a there's a few pockets, there's some jutting out sections, there's a few dead mangroves, just a bit of stuff to mix it up. Gives your target points to hit, also gives it areas where bait holds and that sort of thing, so I'll give them a little bit more attention a lot of the time. Got my folks fishing with me there in the axe just drifting down from me here. They're sticking with the slim swims, the old faithful quarter ounce one OG head in the slim swims. They've got a nice 35 centimetre silver javelin fish, grunter. JC caught that, my mum. They give you a bit of stick on the light spin gear. JC so. might have a trev on, I think. It's taking, just taking my line, she says, so we might rip down there and join in the fun, just have a bit of a look. Hopefully it's a big grunter, but might be a trev or a monster flatfish. Silver? I reckon it's a trev. Although it's got some flatty looking head shakes, if it's a flatty, it's going to be a good one. Was that a giant brown flatfish I just saw? Trevally maybe. Is that? It's giving you a fair bit of stick. Is that? I might come in the middle and crush a party. <laughs> it looks like a Trevor. No wonder it's no wonder it's giving you so much stick. It is a Trev. That's awesome. Put your rod tip towards the tip of your kayak because you keep spinning around. I can't get near you and just enjoy the slow ride. Oh. He was tying me in knots. He's a good sized one, Estuary Trev. He's in the net. Oh. He's a tank. Have you got your grips? We'll get a couple of photos and we'll get him back in the drink. That's a nice GT, Jason. It's all right, mate. You just be good and you can go. Yeah. Couple of quick picks. So just try and hold him level. Yep, yep. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh that one's silver. Oh. Brembo, and he's eating the weedless goat. That's pretty cool. Or is it a grunter? No, it's a tar one. That's pretty wild. <laughs> I haven't caught a tar one for a while. And that's pretty crazy that that guy just ate a weedless goat. Baby goat. Have a look at that. Tar one, no problem. Getting his mouth around that baby goat and biting him. Plastic clears, fish on. He's only a little fella, but that's pretty cool. It shows that those guys can get their mouth around, those guys can get their mouth around the weedless rigged baby goat anyway. He is around that 29 tipper. So not a monster, but if you wanted to eat him for dinner, you could. And you can see he's a, he's a tar wine, not a brim. More stripey, more rounded nose. 
that's pretty cool. All right, we'll pop that size one snake ox finesse out. There you go, right. that's something a bit different. <laughs> I was looking for another flatty to finish off this little session, but tail one's a bit of fun as well. So that's pretty cool. I reckon there's definitely going to be plenty more fish caught on that three inch baby goat. Both weedless rigged and standard rig. I reckon that's a, a deadly little weapon. So we'll get this guy fixed up and get rolling. Fish on. I definitely think by how well the fish eat this little baby goat. I definitely reckon they think it's crab, hey? That buoyant body sitting up with those two little legs up floating around. Just the way they hit it, they hit it hard. Like, they definitely want to eat, kill it, eat the whole thing. It's cool, it's, a, it's an awesome little crab presentation. You know, creature bait represents a whole bunch of different things, but, you know, frog if you want to buzz it across the top and that sort of thing. But in this situation where I'm fishing around the mangrove edges, I reckon it's a real crabby looking thing. Maybe prawny when it's kicking around a bit. It's kicking around a bit. It looks like a prawn, I guess. And then, yeah, paused on the bottom. Looks a bit crabby. Definitely effective though. Especially considering the conditions. This water is coffee. Absolute feral. That's why I've gone for the hot snakes color. That hot snakes color is UV reactive in the belly. Sort of green pumpkin top and a UV reactive belly that, um, yeah, really stands out. So it's, you know, we've got those two kicking feet and we've got that UV reactive quality. So in this coffee colored water, it gives us a fair chance of the fish feeling the lure around them and also seeing the lure. And then of course, touch Procure Scent, bit of super gel on there and saltwater yabby nipper or whatever flavor you love. And that gives it that smell as well. So they can feel it and smell it and taste it and see it. Maximum chance of getting a fish to eat it. shallow water. What are you? Are you a fish or are you a lump or something? He's cranky now. He's cranky now. Come out of there, buddy. Come out of those mangroves. We've got the baby goat. Weedless rig baby goat. Stonker Flatty, Weedless Rig Baby Goat, Three Inch Baby Goat, look at that thing, oh what a weapon. Coming out of the mangroves mate, oh yeah, that's good fun on that 2 to 4 kilo, TT Rod's Red Belly, this guy is going to get me in the sticks if I'm not careful, oh come on. I'm gonna have to do some fancy paddle work now. Pretty much gotta get him up and in now. Come on, mate. Not gonna have too many shots here before I end up in the trees. Holy dooly, that guy's got some punch. Oh, that thing's got some punch. That leader's right in the gob too. I'm gonna play it a little bit gently, gently now. It's a bit tired. No, I'm still cranky. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Got the leader down the gob, so we don't want to get bitten off. Just want to unhook it and just let you go again, buddy. Come on, in you come, in you come, in you come, come on. Come on, leader, hang on. Yes. Yes. That's a beautiful fish, look at that one. 
Oh, that is a beautiful fish. That's on the weirdest rig baby goat again. What a way to wrap up the session. I'm just drifting my way back. That is a solid fish. There you go, folks. What a battle and what a fish. If you haven't tried that three inch baby goat, give it a crack. And if you're fishing up in the snags and mangroves and stuff, try it on that one sixth size one snake locks finesse jig head. Buckle up, fish on. So there you go, folks. That was a pretty cool session fishing the Z-Man three inch baby goat. Now let's have a look at how to rig this plastic weedless so that we can get in and we can fish all that weedy area and all those snags where those fish are hiding. All right, so we've got our TT Lures snake locks in that one sixth ounce in a number one. We've got our three inch baby goat. Now let's rig them. So you can see this jig head here. This is a snake locks, TT Lures snake locks. So you may be familiar with the chin locks. The chin locks jig head is without the weight and it basically has this chin lock keeper on here. The snake locks has that head weight on the front that is removable or interchangeable. So our aim is to lock the chin of the plastic with that chin lock keeper there. So all we do simply is grab our goat and remember with your three inch baby goat, before you fish it, you wanna pop those feet apart so that we get maximum action out of that plastic, get those two feet kicking along. We then wanna tip our plastic upside down and we wanna capture the chin of the plastic. So all we're really doing is putting the hook through the nose of the plastic nice and straight and on a 45 degree angle, we're coming out underneath the plastic in the center of the plastic. So we're capturing the chin. You can see there I've just got the chin of the plastic and the Z-Man being 10 times tough, beautiful for weedless rigging because it doesn't just tear out of the chin there. Now we want to slide that hook through right up till we get to that chin lock and you can see the little chin lock keeper there. We need to push that plastic up and over that chin lock keeper. So it takes a little bit of work and you'll feel it pop up over there. And there you go. That plastic is now captured in that chin lock keeper. So you can see there the chin lock is holding the plastic in place. So the plastic will spin around naturally now and it'll want to sit where it needs to sit for rigging on the jig head. So you can see there, we've got it held in there with that chin lock. Now all we really need to do is pin this plastic with the hook on the jig head where we want it. So we're gonna come up from underneath and if you put the hook against the underside of the plastic, you can see that the hook wants to go through between those two segments there is basically where the, one hook, where the hook wants to go in. So all we need to do then is take the plastic. I'll generally bend the plastic so that I can get a nice clean shot straight up through the center of those two there. We'll push the plastic up, put the, push the jig head up through the plastic, through the back of the plastic. And there we go, we are weedless rigged. So you can see that hook sits beautifully against the top of the plastic to make it weedless. And that allows us to run through the timber, run through lilies, run through weed, all sorts of structure. When the fish bites the plastic, it clears the hook and gets hooked up and, you, and you'll see from those hookups, you'll see that plastic blasted right up the jig head. You know, the fish with that 10 times tough, super soft and flexible material, fish have no problem at all clearing that plastic from the hook. A bite on there and away we go. And there you go, pretty simple. Remember the chin lock is where we captured the chin of the plastic and then we just put our hook back straight up through the plastic and we're ready to fish weedless. All right, so there you go. The three inch baby goat rigged weedless on a TT Lewis snake locks finesse jig head in a one six number one. You could go that one o, you could go that two o, depending on the species that you're targeting and that sort of thing, but a very, very effective way to fish. It rigs beautifully and fishes beautifully weedless. So get out there, give it a crack. All the best with the fishing. Cheers.